Janet, we've only just met you. Could you tell us a little more about yourself? I am a resident of the Mid-Atlantic, and I have known DJ for many years. We've been through uh, many bad choices in partners and haircuts, and uh, we are pretty good with both of those now. So I am a pagan, pansexual, polyamorous weirdo. I am a huge nerd, sci-fi geek, uh, obsessed with reading, but never have time to read. I have piles of books sitting around my house begging me to read them. And that's me. I, I enjoy sounding off on various things. So this is an interesting opportunity for me. So, Janet, how was your week? My week, uh, my last little while, really, has been interesting because our um, our old kitty, Chester, he passed on. He was almost 20. I mentioned that last show. And we've adopted two almost four-year-old girl kitties from a friend of ours who's in a transitional situation. Scarlet is a calico and sweet as pie. Even though she's still a little skittish with weird sounds like the ice maker and uh, other things she hasn't ever dealt with. She just gets really confused sometimes. And then there's Sire, who is a big, fat, orange floof. She's probably part Maine Coon. She hides and runs, and that's pretty much Fire. And we're trying, oh, and Craft in my basement, even though we have a box down there, she decides she just wants to think outside the box, like, all the time. Uh, I'm not sure what's up with that, but Fire, um, Fire's going to take some getting used to. I hope she'll get better with that. Um, it's been a busy May. It's been a rainy, crazy May here in my area. My partner and I are running a spiritual retreat for our pagan group, and that's going to be awesome. It's a lot of logistics and a lot of shopping and a lot of packing, though, so I've been a little crazy with that. Go ahead, DJ. What was good for you this week? This week was an interesting week. I'm trying not to make work my low point all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's just part of life, you know. Bring home the bacon and deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I would say probably, well, I'm going to go differently this week. The high point of my week was now that my other half, Billy, is running his store, his boss is out on maternity leave, he's able to have Sundays off with me. So we're able to get into more of a routine. And we just this last week, we went on a trip just about an hour away. And, well, this may sound odd, but one of my hobbies is genealogy. I've gotten interested in looking up the past. It's kind of an extension of my interest in science fiction, you know, with time travel. And certainly <laughs> I love Doctor Who. And what better way to visit the past than by looking up old records? And so Billy and I took a trip out to the country and we visited this really old cemetery, and it's just beautiful. It's one that has graves for people who were Civil War soldiers. Ooh, yeah. And so I have literally been to my three and four times great-grandfather's family on one side of my, my tree. And it's just amazing to go into this old cemetery with all these beautifully ornate headstones that people actually, you know, had to carve at the time yeah. and take great care to make. And it's just a wonder to see these, these works of art and how they've stood the test of time. And maybe some of them haven't, but to be there and understand that you have a connection with somebody there. It, of course, is probably different than, you know, going to visit a grandparent's grave or whatnot, but it, it's a very humbling feeling to understand that you're visiting somebody because they were there, you're here now. Yeah. And so I, I have this sort of ritual that I do where when I've learned where an ancestor's plot is, 
I go and visit and I leave flowers just as you would for somebody that you knew in your own life, but with the understanding that I am here because they were here first. So it's it's interesting because you, you see who they're buried with and you learn who their in-laws were and yeah. possibly how big a family they came from. It's, it was just a breathtaking old cemetery because it's so densely wooded in this place. Oh, wow. These, <laughs> you know, the sunlight doesn't come through the canopy enough for there to be a thick grass covering. Mm. So, so a lot of the ground is just moss. It, it just makes you feel like you're in some sort of a, like a video game adventure where you're <laughs> some sort of a knight from the days of old and you're wandering among these headstones of people that lived, you know, maybe a century or two ago. So it's, it was just a very humbling thing, very beautiful. That's an extension of my, my uh, interest in genealogy. That was my high point of that last week. Some people find it odd that some, in some ways I spend more time with dead people <laughs> than living. But, and I guess, so what was the low point? Well, I think the low point in, yes, it's going to be worse. <laughs> Surprise. I'm, I'm going to work on that. The low point of my week was learning that the only person who would sit at lunch with me was being transferred to our new office across town. I, I seem to have this, uh, this stroke of luck where I wait to befriend people until they've been there a while because um, the candy shop likes to use temps. So, um, you know, we'll have people hired on and the intention is that they will stay there for a year before the company decides if they're, you know, worth their salt. So um, naturally I've grown accustomed to waiting before I decide who I'm going to rub elbows with. Yeah. And this person has actually been there for, oh, only maybe a year or so less than me, but they made the decision that because she's working a later shift and my section of the building works the latest because yeah. we have West Coast accounts and <laughs> there's an, there's, you know, there is a contract that basically says, we have to stay open until a certain hour to receive their phone calls. Yep. So uh, as part of that, we had people working later hours. And my friend, um, well, let's see, what shall I call her? Um, let's call her Rosie. Um, Rosie was one of the people that worked the later shift because – She's the sort that likes to do online gaming. She's mm -hmm. a little socially awkward, which would explain why she talks to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, she, of course, prefers a later shift because mm -hmm. then it's not such a chore to wake up at uh, you know nine or ten o'clock in the morning when you've been playing games until three or four a.m. Yeah. So, anyways, they decided uh, the candy shop decided that because there was only one other person that worked that late and they were being transferred to the new office, that Rosie was not going to be allowed to stay in the building by herself. Right. Which, you know, that, that, um, that makes sense because we're not in the best part of town. And even with building security there, I think, that might even be a lot of companies' policies is that you're not supposed to be the only one there, especially once management's left. Yeah, I think that uh, they they don't like to have people there that uh, the underlings there when when no one else is there because right because you could help yourself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that was the low point of my week was learning that Rosie was being transferred to the new office because of her later shift. And so now I don't have anyone to spend my lunch with, which <laughs> it's, that's, uh, you know, as they would say. I, I know a, that that's a, that's a bad thing, but. Um, 
Well, I've kind of turned that frown upside down. I've 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 gotten a longer lunch because of the shift that I chose. Mm-hmm. So so now I'm I'm listening to more podcasts again. <laughs> <laughs> my the highlight of my week was not only am I out of the hospital, but I do not have pneumonia anymore. Yay! And, and, and we are working at getting rid of the oxygen. I don't have to wear it when I'm just sitting around talking to people. I need to wear it when I do stuff, when I get up and like wash the dishes or vacuuming the floor, doing the things that, uh, you know, doing active things. Mm -hmm. But, and for a little while after I stopped doing those things. But other than that, when I'm just hanging out, I don't have to use it. One of these days, hopefully, we'll get down to the not using it at all, but I'm afraid that's not going to happen because, of course, I, like many other people of my generation and other generations who have smoked a lot of cigarettes and hung around people who smoked a lot of cigarettes, I have COPD. So uh, the story of my life is not going to be a gorgeous end. (laughs) Well... The the Duchess just comes with her own jetpack. It's true. When I was in the hospital, they brought me this first tray, and I'm, I'm going, this isn't food, this isn't food, this isn't food. And it was all their, their diabetic stuff. And I says, I only eat real food. And so we, it, we had to ma- work around things because I don't eat diet food. It tastes terrible. I don't know who invented it, but they should have been tortured or something no they shouldn't have nobody should be tortured but (laughs) but they certainly should not have been allowed to cook because it's just they restrict women to 60 grams of of carbohydrates every meal and they restrict men to 75 grams of carbohydrates every meal that seems grossly unfair to me but that's what they do Anyway, I discovered that if you mess around and you look at the carbohydrates and stuff, that you can actually put together some fairly decent food without going over that 60, 60 grams of carbohydrate. Um, for instance, butter has no carbohydrate grams in it. <laughs> Ooh, I'm sure Paula <laughs> Dean's elated. <laughs> <laughs> However, well, I'm thinking you're not supposed to eat that much. However... Uh, margarine does, and margarine is, in my mind, is is like eating, I don't know, uh, liquid something, plastic, something, because it's made <laughs> out of, it's made out of petroleum byproducts, and it just is not, I think, fit to eat. And Janet, what was it that you wanted to share this week? Oh, I want to take the opportunity to plug um, one of my favorite authors that no one's ever heard of, a person who was writing boy wizard stories before Harry Potter was really ever a gleam in anyone's eye. They're very different than Harry Potter because it's more of a, a singular person's journey as opposed to a whole um, ensemble cast, but you do get the ensemble cast later in the series. Her name is Grace Chetwin. C-H-E-T-W-I-N, and she has written many books. The GOM series is one that's about the boy wizard. She's putting that up on her website. She reads it, uh, posts new chapters twice a week, and she reads it out loud, and it's for free. You can stream it for free on there. She is into the fourth book now, so there's a lot to catch up on uh, if you're just interested in hearing a really good story. She also owns her own publishing company and has published all of her own books. They were originally published by larger companies back in the day, back in the late 80s, late 80s, but she is doing it her way, which I think is awesome. She's written adult fiction. She has a really awesome um, adult science fiction saga, as well as some other middle grade books. And listen to me, if I'm in a library and with the middle grade. Um, I think you should check her out. That's why I'm plugging her here on The Far Away Near. Again, that's Grace Chetwin, C H E T W I N. So, going on to our weekly topics, I believe that you had some interesting 
uh, footage about um, uh, one of our former press secretaries. Yes. Um, well, I'm a big fan of this network TV series that is no longer on the air, but it ran for a number of years. And I, I believe, Sue, that you and I had a common interest in it. It was called I believe the, so. <laughs> yes, it was called The West Wing, and uh, it starred Martin Sheen in the role of the president. And uh, for those who may not have ever watched it, um, basically it was the life of the president and staff. And some have likened the character to, um, you know, the uh, the history of the Kennedy administration or the Clinton administration. Mm -hmm. And uh, this president is sort of a blend of it somewhere in between. But anyways, um, West Wing star Allison Janney, who played the White House press secretary, C.J. Craig, recently made an appearance at the White House. She was there to make an appearance. However, she uh, entered the press, uh, the press corps room and approached the podium in character. And this got much applause from those there from the media. She approached the podium and she began to address them just as she would on her TV series. Now, um, at one point, she actually admitted that she was there for other pre reasons, and that she did turn the podium over to the actual White House press secretary, but she explained that she was in D.C. along with her uh, creative staff of her current series, Mom, which I believe airs on Fox. It's a television show about dysfunctional families and people who have uh, substance dependencies and are possibly in support programs. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, with the recent passing of Prince, uh, this has become a issue of importance because we are realizing that in this country there are people who have addictions who may not be experiencing those with illegal substances, but things that their doctors have prescribed. So um, Alice and Jenny explained that she was there to promote awareness of prescription uh, medication abuse. And um, of course it was quite interesting because for those who are fans of the show, uh, before she turned the podium over to the, rightful real world press secretary she uh jokingly asked the audience if there were any questions for her and of course one of the members of the press corps who was clearly a fan asked how president bartlett felt about the candidates of the upcoming election <laughs> <laughs> so a um another similar vein in the world of politics, um, something that came up in uh, current news is uh, actor comedian Will Ferrell was recently associated, or at least it was um, suggested that he was going to be associated with an upcoming film that was being made about President Reagan. And this was to be about his years in office and possibly also include his later years where he became afflicted with Alzheimer's. Now, um, the story wasn't out there for very long before Will Ferrell was actually approached by several of the Reagan children. And of course they had their take on what the actor would bring to the table. And of course they explained to him that uh, Alzheimer's is no laughing matter and it would be a devastating tragedy for this actor to take part in such a film. So um, those that not being a direct quote, but it wasn't long before the actor announced that he was pulling out of the project. 
And yeah, that I, was. Go ahead. go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. I was going to say that was very sweet of him, but I don't know. I I don't know that that's what he would have brought to the to this. Some comedians can be very very good in in touching things. You know, he might have actually brought something to the table that that and would I, have have been good and stuff. And I don't know that um, there's much content available on the matter. I don't, I'm not even sure that he was slated to, to portray Reagan himself. I think the news was that he was simply involved in the creative process or possibly the staff. Mm-hmm. So we may not have even seen him on camera, but he was shamed to the point that he decided it wasn't in his interest to be part of that. But, um, uh, yeah, and it may be a little too soon and we maybe haven't seen enough films about Alzheimer's yet. Mm -hmm. I know there have been a few out, but not a lot of them. And, um, and I don't think they've, they've gotten as much, um, I, I have sort of promised myself that I wasn't going to deal with real politics in this in, in our podcasts because everybody deals with real politics and it's sort of depressing. But there is something that I, but today I just have to talk about something. As we have seen, it appears that Donald Trump is going to be the Republican uh, candidate for president in the fall. And it is all but certain that Hillary Clinton is going to be his opponent. I am really disturbed about this, partially, well, because, well, there are many reasons, but but the main reasons that, that I bring them up at this point is that both Clinton and Trump have got issues with the people in Congress and or the court system. Now, Hillary has been hassled by the Senate and the legal system since she, since her husband entered politics some 30 years ago or so. So Hillary Clinton and actually the Clintons have been hassled by well, they would tell you the Republicans, but they've been hassled by, by people in office in Senate houses, mostly the Senate and the, and the House of Representatives and, and the national level over any number of things. So I think that the Clintons and especially Hillary are going to be attacked, if not in that the, the House of Representatives and the Senate are going to continue talking about those stupid, stupid emails that she had on her private server that she didn't use the state server, this uh, this state department server because it was so hinky, and neither did any of her other people. But they didn't. Uh, they don't talk about them. They just usually bring Hillary to the to the to the Senate to or House to to the Congress to talk about those things. And I would not be at all surprised if the Republicans Republicans don't try and attack her on um, Benghazi once again. And with Donald Trump, we have issues of his, that stupid Trump University is going to court that just in the last part of April, the court said that that suit, that that he was being sued by uh, some of the people who took that was going to go forward. And these things are bound to come up either right about the time of our election or right after the election. And we have elected one of these two people as our president. And I find this a really sad development. It looks like we have, are turning ourselves into a third world nation where we have not picked the best people in our country or anything close to the best people. But we have picked people that are questionable and, and maybe have a lot of problems with, with not, not behaving like respectable human beings by doing things that are not good for business. For 
business or or the nation or anything else. I, I find this really sad. And I really wish that we had had some different kind of a, of a, of a resident or of a primary season that different people had run. I, I just don't understand where these people have come from. I know that there are a lot of people that really love Hillary and I I guess she is the first woman that has come anywhere close to being the president and that is a wonderful thing but with the legal issue she has or possibly has with the the outcry from uh, as I say probably mostly Republicans there's going to be I, I just don't see this coming out happy no matter how the election comes out and the same thing with Donald Trump he has these legal issues that have not been put to bed and they seem to pop up every few years from him so I'm not sure there was any time that in his adult life that he was really in a good state to run for president. And I find this a really sad, sad commentary on our country that we don't have a better, uh, a, a better feel for for the wholeness and the goodness of people around us. I know there are better people than either of these two human beings than in, in living in the United States that qualified for being president that could have been president. Of course, you know various administrations have had their mark on history as far as you know what took place during that time frame. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, you know, as they say, the face of politics has changed many times. Couldn't tell you which president it was at the time, but certainly when, you know, radio came about, then the president had to be somebody who, you know, their speeches didn't just get printed in the paper, but you had to be important sounding when you addressed people because they were able to hear your voice now. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, of course, we went from radio to television. So not, now, not only did you have to sound like you were confident when you spoke, but you actually had to dress the part. Yes. And so, you know, turning the page to the further extreme now, when, um, you know, the events of the real world aren't something that the person walking on the street might be aware of but you know what this or that singer wore to the award ceremony is probably something they know it's just a sad state of things and you know um people who are in the business of business it's assumed that they are intelligent individuals and they can make good decisions but the truth of the matter is once you get to a certain level of personal wealth, you no longer have to make those decisions yourself. You pay other people to. Out in the As our show continues to move forward, I just wanted to take a moment and recognize some of my inspirations. When I first started out listening to podcasts, it was a result of a web search gone awry. I was looking for material on the Logo Channel's then-current sketch comedy series, The Big Gay Sketch Show, and stumbled upon Matthew Burlingame and the Big Gay Sex Show. For years, Matt and Ouija, along with the likes of Wanda Wisdom, gave me the church giggles at work and helped me through some difficult times like an old friend. More recently, Matt has continued his personal journal, Spanking B. Arthur, and co-host Chubb's Gone Wild with film reviewer Tom Swanner, both of which I look forward to each time I see a new episode on my playlist. Thank you for having the courage it takes to sit in front of a microphone and share your stories, Matt. Thank you for the laughs. So thank you for listening to The Far Away Nearby. You can visit our webpage at thefnpodcast.com, find our fan page on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at TFNDJ, and visit our companion blog on Tumblr. Our show is available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Send us an email at tfnpodcast at gmail.com or call and leave a message at 720-230-6919. This show is part of the Pride 48 Network. 
Find more shows over at Pride48.com.